Hey, hi, Glenn here at the workshop at the gardens. Thanks so much for coming back and checking out this video about putting these post assemblies together for the Grinbig inspired timber frame covered pergola. Yow, that's a mouthful if I would say so. We're gonna walk you through step by step what I did to get this ready to get to the next step. You may have already checked out the video about getting the full dimensional lumber ready and yeah, that's snow, so I'm way behind schedule. We're gonna get this thing in yet this year. Promises, promises, I tell you. All right, let's get going. It was the middle of summer when we started laying out the timbers, but this project started long before that. I had already put the footings in the previous year, um, but it took me a couple of years to acquire all of the timber that we used in this project. So all of these timbers are white, cedar otherwise known as arbovita american Ar arbovita except for one one of them is a red cedar and that's the one that i just set there and actually i didn't know it was a red cedar until we cut into it it was quite spectacular um but yeah these trees are easily over 100 years old they were sourced from uh, a local tree company that knows i look for wood like this and so during tornadoes and storms when something comes down like this, which isn't often, they reach out and say, hey, I've got a, a, a large cedar, are you interested? I'm like, sure, I'll come get it. And that's what we do. All right, so, but the first thing, once we have that, it take, took me a while, because my plan to do this is very simple. I just have a drawing with some measurements um, because it's hard to draw an exact. If you're working on cut timber, you would have like a six by six or a eight by eight and you would have a set size that you'd be working with that's not the case here we're working with peeled logs that's what we're doing Janae is helping out fantastically getting the logs all peeled and then loading them up on the truck there but you would have the set uh size so these vary in 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 diameter so what i'm doing is what i'm calling maybe i have no idea what it's called but it's called center line i'm using the center line and that's where I'm measuring the, everything from. So it really doesn't matter how thick it is because it's the center line that I'm working with. I am calling it a Grinbig inspired project because I'm stealing the joinery from a project that I saw up at North House Folk School that uh, Peter Hendrickson did. And I will put a link to his video up above. And he did cleaving. So I'm like, hey, why not try to cleave a log? So one of the big cedar logs I tried to cleave and cleaving means you take an axe and wood metal things and you start sticking them in there and you start prying it apart and you split the whole log in half and I failed absolutely miserably on this so I have so much to learn but in doing this I did learn a few things probably the wrong piece of wood maybe a few too many uh, branches in there but anyways um, <laughs> done with that all right we are going to get started on putting some posts together here. And this happens to be the one red cedar log that's in there. And as I start to cut the end on this, you will really see why it's why they call them red cedars, because look at that red sawdust. All right, and doing the posts and why it's a grin big, you cut in in the center and that is called the throat. So I'm notching down and putting a throat and then you'll see the two pieces uh, of on each side, the two pieces that stick up, those are called the ears. And when I do the tie beam, the tie beam will drop in between those. I made that six inches wide. So when I cut the tie beam, I will leave that six inches and it should just drop right in there. Grinbig inspired because I won't be using wood fasteners. I will be using metal fasteners to, uh, lock this together and I won't have, I'll just have a flat roof and not a pitched roof pushing the two posts away from each other. But the joinery is still very cool. All right, I have two posts put together are cut out and they're standing up there, got them all nice. And now I'm gonna start to work on the tie beam. And as I mentioned the tie beam, I'm measuring to the outside of each of the ears up on the posts and I need to uh, cut in what would be the the notch that's going to drop in to those throats on the post the piece that hangs out on the outside that doesn't get any cutting is called the head that's what holds the two posts from kind of spreading apart that keeps it in there and i do the notch so uh 
just like chainsaw carving, grabbing my little steel chainsaw and I marked it all out and working plumb and getting things very, very close and actually did pretty good. So we're doing our first notch right here. Actually, we did the other side, just showing you it in slow more, or regular speed, the notching and dropping in. So I cut down the face on both sides and then did what I would call a plunge cut. If you're plunge cutting, always use the bottom side of the tip. Don't use the top side of the tip. That's when you get the kickback. But once you're plunged in and another little secret to plunge cutting, and I don't always do it, but another little secret is full throttle, full speed. Do not kind of idle into it. Just give it and go. All right. And what I don't want to do is overcut too much. So I'm just going in nice and slow, nice and slow. And then I'll probably pop to the other side and drop in just so I bring those two together. And it's a 14 inch blade on that little uh, steel. So you get a little idea on the size. That's about a, I don't even know, I should go measure it. Um, 12 to 14 inch uh, log there. So this will get all the way through and yep, slowly, slowly cutting it. And once it gives free, then we will um, just pull that off. I, like I said, I don't wanna overcut and we'll get in there. But I notched out uh, all four of those, and that gives me that six inches that's going to drop in. They're a quick time lapse of getting the other side. Now I'm using uh, two of my hewing axes, or I should say hatchets. One is a left hung and the other is a right hung. And I need to, on the inside, I'm going to taper those in so they're, they match and they flow in on the inside. The outside has to stay like that. As I mentioned, that's the head that holds the two post assemblies um, together. So just a lot of hewing and banging and getting them cut. As I mentioned, I did start this in the summer, and I do believe this was like a 95-degree day, so it was, uh, it was warm, to say the least. The other side doing a little back cut on the, on the notch inside there. And then it was time. The next thing is that I measured when I cut the post assemblies, the bottom um, of that throat is at the same exact height. So I'll need to go in there and do a flat part on the tie beam on the notch, and that will give us the level piece in there. So slowly working on that. Of course, when you're working with a round log, everything just kind of doesn't sit nice and easy. Um, <laughs> So when you start working on things, eyeing it up, it's a good to go. So here's where she starts to bounce around a little bit just because I don't didn't get it uh, secured that well. That's when we went and got a nice pipe uh, wrench and secured the tie beam down to the sawhorses. Yes, and I made those sawhorses up at uh, North House. I'll link to a video about making those. That was a fun project. But as you can see there, I flattened out one side. I'll get the other side and just using a long straight edge to just double check everything and make sure that we're square, we're lying, and it'll be there. And I'm sure there's a mechanical way to put that in there, but at this time working by myself, I didn't have a good way to lift it up there. So why not just carry it up the ladder and drop it in? Yep. Oof. Ah, some days, some days work smarter, not harder. That's what they say, but doesn't always happen when you're in the heat of the battle. There we go. One of the assemblies is done. That looks pretty sharp. A couple little tweaks to get a uh, seat all the way down into it. That looks awesome. And from this angle, you can really see how the heads on the end of that tie beam hold the top of the post from splitting or spreading out from there. All right. One post assembly done. Uh, when you do something the second time, it makes it a lot easier. So we're on to the second Post assembly and just cutting things a little faster because it's you've already done it once. Dropping in and making that throat on the next timber right there. But at this time, I'm thinking about um, what I'm going to do for what's called the wall plate. The wall plate's going to be the longer piece between the two uh, post assembly. And that is my answer right there. I had a large larch log that I had cut down uh, earlier or that we had taken down earlier. It was actually a tree that my grandfather planted. So all kinds of fun history. We'll cover that in the next video about getting the wall plates um, cut because we're not going to try to cleave those because, yeah, we'll learn how to do that. All right, setting up my phone right there. So uh, if you didn't know it, I have a TikTok account. I'm sure you do too. So 
There's a link down in the description. Find me on TikTok and see what videos I made from right there. That'd be kind of fun. And then follow me and say hi, and I'll follow you back. Something like that. Ooh, delivery truck. So easy to be distracted. All right, finishing up uh, the last tie beam here. Again, things happen fairly quick when you've done one. Um, dropping in, leaving the heads, and then we will end up... Uh, cutting those and earlier in the video I said I would hold it down with a pipe wrench and I actually meant pipe clamp but I'm sure you figured that out so I'm not going to worry about adding any graphics to it anyways really appreciate the fact that you uh, took the time to watch uh, this video about putting the grin big inspired covered pergola post assemblies together so I uh, appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up and you share it and if this is your first video here, uh, consider subscribing to the channel and we'll share a lot more projects like this, working with wood, stone, and steel, uh, landscaper know-how, and growing and building the gardens. And I do a little bit of gardening stuff at home in the gardens. All right, what better way to finish this video off than carrying a timber up the ladder and dropping it in the two post assemblies think of a better way to do that all right if you have any questions comments leave them down below would love to answer them and if you've done anything like this leave me a comment also and we'll figure it out tom would be happy right here cleaning up my workspace before i try to lift the timber up in place and here we go this one had a little bit more trimming uh, on that side before it dropped it and there we go all right gotta finish up do a little bit of mowing out in the vineyard on an absolutely beautiful summer day. Thanks again for checking out the video and we will catch you next time. Enjoy.